Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank God that we are here today. Um, thank God for this word. Um, I pray that everybody is having a safe holiday, um, you know, on this resurrection of Christ and that they're enjoying it with their families. God bless you guys. I pray that God will continue to cover over you and keep you and your family safe and protect over you with the love of Christ. So as you can see as the title, um, it does say suffering as Christians. And I do want to touch on this topic because this is very rev rev relevant now and in other people's lives um, that are facing, you know, um, persecution because just for believing in Christ and standing firm on your belief and, and not wavering like the enemy wants us to. Um, hey, he's just going to have to live with it. <laughs> so. I just want to read a few scriptures that just touch touches on this just to encourage somebody hey listen um it doesn't matter if they're mocking you if they're insulting you or whatever they're doing to you you just know the the things that christ has already overcame just by him sacrificing his life and paying the price for us um he did say that we will suffer persecution and some of us will even you know be put to death but he also says that we should rejoice in the suffering and let me just get into the scriptures because you we don't want to just look at it because of the now and how we feel in the now and i have to realize that too sometimes it's hard because we you know in that moment the enemy wants to come in and place negativity or doubt and worry in your mind everything that's contrary to to, to christ he doesn't want your mind fixed on him because you know god says fix your things fix your mind on the things above and not the things on the earth so we don't want to you know the enemy will try to know that you know you're in god's presence and you're trying to pray and you're trying to get your life right so the enemy is throwing in you know distractions and doubt and worry and fear hey use that authority god gave you just the other day i was like oh i felt like uh, -uh. like somebody said something i was like and it tried to alter my thought in the way i was thinking stuff i said you know what i'm gonna use that authority that god gave me um who sits high and looks low jesus christ died for us so now he has all the authority and being though that now that we are in the body of Christ, we have the authority to take, take control and trample over scorpions and stay. I said, uh, -uh, uh, uh, I know my authority. I rebuke that spirit. I bind it and cast every high wicked imagination that tries to exalt itself above the word of God. And I just started going at it and just next thing, you know, that dark cloud poof. Hey, use that authority. Get mad, get ugly with it because Hey, enough is enough you want to stop you want you want to stop those negative thoughts you have authority to stop those negative thoughts you have the power just know you have the power to do it and i'm a living witness because just the other day somebody threw doubt in me and i i had to hey and through worry and i had already and see that what the enemy does you know how the word god says he will he will take he will he will carry our burdens cast our burdens upon him so I was, you know, I gave God my burden of worry. I said, Lord, and maybe you could repeat that. I said, let's do a little prayer, actually, because I know right now I just had that attack and I had to come up against it. So let me just pray for a moment. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, Father God, I cast my burdens upon you, Lord. First of all, I want to repent for my sins, Father God, because I know that I'm not perfect. And I know that we all fall short, short of your glory and that we we aren't perfect and i we don't claim to be perfect but father god we we love you lord god we don't want to continue to see people to come against you father god and we suffer the persecution because just of your because believing in your name father god i i, I just want to place my worries upon you father god so that i may not worry lord i just want to give my doubt to you father god that the enemy is placing doubt in the things that you have told me and placing unbelief in me so that i may not believe you father god father god i believe you i love you and i trust you father god i come out of agreement with all the things that the enemy has tried to speak over my life and say into my life father god you said no weapon shall prosper no weapon formed against me shall prosper but every tongue that rise up against me shall you i shall condemn father god father god anybody 
anybody that says anything negative negative about my life father god i'm i'm binding it and i'm rebuking it in the name of jesus because that will not be my portion father god for you said that i am blessed and not and, and not cursed and i will not allow nobody to put word curse on over over my life i will condemn it in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray amen so just like i was saying like they were trying to throw doubt and speak negativity into my life and you know god you know when people are condemning you and they're speaking poison to your life you take that into captivity you rebuke it because you are allowing it to take precedent in your life and when you allow the negativity somebody says about you that you know is not true and it's not about you. You condemn that right away because what that can do, it can start to fester and it'll grow. It, you might not be worried or thinking about it later, but it only takes just like the word says the faith of a mustard seed. That's all the faith you need. So the enemy tries to counter react to that by placing a little seed of doubt in you so that it can grow as well. Like the weeds and the tares, you know, at the harvest. The guy noticed that, you know, when he was going to harvest that there were a lot of weeds. So what did he said? Wait till harvest time. We're going to separate the tares from the weeds. And we're going to take the weeds and place them in a bar. And we're going to take the tares and place them in a bundle. And we're going to burn them. So that's what the enemy did. When God speaks a good thing over your life, the enemy will try to speak a negative thing. So condemn that negative thing. Don't even let it grow in your in your harvest. Don't even let it take take president over the good things and the good seeds that you're doing that God has told you to do out of your obedience. Don't let that take um, president over your life. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. <sighs> I'm sorry. I got a little off track, but I had to get into that because I, I want somebody to know, like, this is my personal experience that I just experienced a couple of days ago. And I'm a help as I learn and go through it as well, too. So that's some it to bring somebody else through. So let me get back on track. Um, I want to go ahead and read the scriptures about, you know, suffering as Christians. And it says here, um, we're going to start First uh, Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 12. And I'm going to just read to 15. And it says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trials that has come upon you as, the, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you share that you share in the suffering of Christ. We are to rejoice. It may not feel good. It may be uncomfortable. It may be the enemy is placing negative things in your mind. Rejoice. Rejoice. Because we're sharing in the same suffering as Christ. So that you may be over in in the end, he said, you may be overjoyed at the revelation of his glory. That's just telling you right there. You already have the victory. God is going to bring you out. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be overjoyed. So right now in the present time, don't worry about how it looks like. Some people are in the midst of it in the beginning. Some people are coming out of it. But hey, wherever you are in it, still rejoice of the suffering that you're going on because Christ has already went through it. So he knows the outcome. He, 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 he's already been through what we've been through. So now that we're suffering as him, we are going to, he's going to, we're going to see his revelation of his glory in the end. And it says verse 14, if you are insulted for the, you, if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed. You you see that you are blessed because just because people are coming up against you because of who you believed in, you are already blessed because the spirit of glory in the, the spirit of glory, right? And of God rests on you. Do you understand that? The spirit of God's glory is resting upon you. It doesn't matter what it feels like. I was about to cry, but I said, you know what? Nah, -uh, Satan. See, that's what Satan wanted me to do. He he knew it used to affect me in the past when people came up against me and, and said negative things to me. I used to go to the Lord like, 
you know, just cry about it and pray for the person. To ask. I said, uh, uh, not this time. I rebuked that spirit in the name of Jesus. I came up against it. I said, I know my authority and I just got mad. I mean, not mad like that, but, you know, just start praying in the spirit and coming against it and shutting it down and taking it into captivity and casting it out to the deepest pits of the sea, wherever it came from. And immediately when them negative thoughts come up, start praying, take them into captivity. It don't matter how many times they come up. You, by you already coming up against it, you, you've already defeated the enemy. Because if you know what your enemy is doing to you, if you know how he's attacking you, he's already lost. You get what I'm saying? It's like it, it's not going to work no more. Because you already know. And if it, he tries to use it again, you, you already discern what it is. And that's that's God. That's God actually strengthening your discernment so that you'll be able to discern so we could probably be discerning more quicker you know on our feet thinking fast instead of you know trying to figure out what's going on no it's it ain't, god ain't it ain't gonna be no more figuring out it's gonna be like you already discerned it now come up against it you get what i'm saying so verse 15 says indeed none of you should suffer as a murderer or thief or wrongdoer or even as a meddler so we won't our suffering is not even as we are only suffering the same suffering that christ has suffered for us we had to die a little bit in order to be born again because when we came to christ we were christ we were spiritually circumcised through the spirit of christ so that's what some of you are going through is a spiritual circumcision. Christ is separating you from some things in your past and some people that has tried to attach to you. He's he's removing them off of you spiritually. So it's not the same suffer as what a murderer, or a thief or a wrongdoer or somebody, even a gospel or meddler in people business suffer. You know what I'm saying? It's not the same. Don't compare yourself to it. it may look like it, but it's not the same. Because at the end, he said, we will be overjoyed at the revelation of his glory. So, whatever, let go, just go through the process. I mean, you know, you'll make it through because some, you know, it's, go, it's going to be more good days than bad days. I can tell you that. So, don't just focus on the now. Just continue, rejoice as much as you can. Pray, cry out. He's there and he loves you. And I love you. And I, I pray that this word just encourage you to continue in who you believe in. You know, don't let nobody tell you, you know, your God, where's your God at? And, and Jesus ain't real. I heard Jesus is a prophet. He wasn't, he wasn't the son of God. I, you know, I done heard it all. And guess what? I knew who showed up for me in the past. See, you might not, they might not have had that relationship, but I've had that relationship. So you can't tell me about my God. You understand me? So it don't matter what you try to do to me or, you know, um, spiritually or whatever, tax or whatever. I'm not going to waver at all. So um, I just want to encourage somebody, believe in who you believe in. Believe in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, believe in him. Because the word says... If you if you believe in in Jesus, that is the only that is that is the only way to get to get to the Father. Some of us have being that you're going through what you're going through, and you're going through that circumcision, and Jesus is breaking off some spiritual things from you. Guess what? Now you have access to the Father. You get what I'm saying? So we don't even we don't just have Jesus. Now we can just come straight to the Father. See, that's what they don't know. Now we have access to the Father, the Heavenly God. And some people have not even made it to that point yet because of their faith. They have to be strengthened. They have to believe and trust in Him more. And I pray, again, that this word has helped you. Keep going. Don't give up. Um, I love you. Um, I pray that you guys have a blessed day. And keep going. You know, if you would like for me to pray for you or pray together just just email me you know because 
you can only relate to somebody who has actually gone through it and that's what i had to learn it's like i would try to talk to people and they didn't even how can you talk to somebody who hasn't been through it or even understand it you get what i'm saying and i'm telling you it's not many that's actually been through it and went through it some people some people been through it but they didn't push through it you get what i'm saying they have been through it but they have not pushed through it some people got stuck or, or gave up at some point they're familiar with it but they have you know so let's encourage each other and push each other through it's not about who who made it first or or, or whatever it's about us helping one another so that we can you know push each other to continue to go in to strengthen you know it's it's strength in numbers so have a blessed day i love you again